Just south of New Hampshire's White Mountains rests a charming watershed of serenity and biodiversity. Home to humans and wildlife alike, this cluster of lakes and ponds illustrates a simple solution to human encroachment on wild land, cohabitation. For thousands of years, humans and wildlife alike have called these lakes home. The native fish exemplify the great biodiversity of the region. These lakes and ponds are home to 26 different species of fish who live busy lives searching for food, hiding from predators, surviving the seasons, and spawning. One of the most vibrant hotspots of activity for many is a tiny island surrounded by a humble freshwater reef. No more than 10 feet below the surface, this plateau rises above the 40 feet of dark waters that surround it. It's here that many families, both aquatic and terrarian, call home. Just off the docks of this tiny island, the mating rituals of two species of sunfish are in full swing. while the young of a pair of brown bullhead catfish experience their first days of life. At such an early stage, bullhead catfish resemble tadpoles and school together in the thousands. They are completely defenseless and require the protection of their parents at all times. With predators around every corner, it's a full-time job, leaving little time to sleep or even eat. With no way to guide or transport their young, they are completely at the mercy of their offspring's unguided spirit of adventure. If all goes well for the family, the young will soon be large enough to fend for themselves in just five days. Meanwhile, two of the many predators, red belly and pumpkin seed sunfish, have flocked together from the surrounding area to create their own next generation. They possess homing instincts and have learned the geography of the area in order to come back to this mating site again and again. The reef is their home. These two sunfish species can be distinguished by their markings. Pumpkin seed males are covered with bright cyan and orange spots, while red belly males are simple in coloration with a smooth gradient from dark green on their backs to vibrant orange on their bellies. Female pumpkin seeds are vertically striped with tones of brown, while female red belly sunfish resemble a muted color variation of the males. The two species are quite comfortable schooling together, often creating nests side by side in large groups. Each circle in the sand is a sunfish nest. The males make their nests in the sand by pushing away algae and debris with their fins and mouth, cultivating a rough surface for the female's eggs. The sunfish fearlessly challenge rivals and predators alike, without regard to the size of the foe. Whether it be a larger male, a bass, or a human with a camera. Common displays start with broadsiding and extending their fins and spines to show off their size. If this doesn't work, they face the threat and display their small ornamental black flaps near their gills. If displays fail, they resort to physical violence by chasing and biting. When a rival sunfish considers themselves bested, they lean to the side and leave. While the males prepare their nests and compete with each other for territory, the females sit back and enjoy the show from the sidelines. This male was lucky enough to attract some female attention. They waste no time. They are both in danger while preoccupied in the shallow water. The male must also be conscious of other rivals trying to get his mate's attention. He'll aggressively chase them away if they get too close. The female lays thousands of eggs for the male to fertilize and watch over without her for the next few days before they hatch into tiny fry. Night comes. 
bringing with it peacefulness punctuated by the sounds of common loons. Beneath the calm waters, the sunfish sleep, while others, such as the catfish, must stay alert to protect their young. Morning brings summer showers in the presence of a common loon. A peaceful sight for humans is ominous for sunfish. Once caught in its sights, a sunfish must act quickly. In addition to their impressive agility, loons possess the ability to die for minutes. Though the sunfish are not defenseless, they can turn on a dime in the blink of an eye. The loons bring danger from above, but it also lurks around every corner. Smallmouth bass with their tiger stripes and vertical black tail stripe, and largemouth bass with their single lateral stripe, are major predators, especially favoring unguarded young. They patrol the breeding grounds for a chance to feed. The rainstorm affects life underwater just as it does life above. As the storm picks up, higher winds create stronger currents that disrupt the shallow nesting sites of the sunfish. This male must fight the storm to keep his nest clean. As the storm passes, visibility improves for these highly opportunistic eaters. They'll bite at most anything that will fit in their mouths, whether it be a floating piece of algae, a muscle broken open by a human, or an enticing human toe. They also demonstrate a keen ability to recognize signals of feeding opportunities. One of the reef's frequent human visitors hand feeds the fish mussels by breaking them open with a rock. After a few years, the sunfish learn to associate the sound of rocks tapping with food. Sunfish seem to be social learners, learning quicker in a school than as an individual. We find our friends, the brown bullhead catfish and sunfish, at odds with one another. The catfish school of young have gotten themselves cornered against boulders in shallow, clear water. All the mother can do now is hover over the offspring while scores of sunfish circle, occasionally lunging in and scooping up a few babies with each bite. This could be the end of the new family. Suddenly, father returns with an aggressive display to scare off the sunfish, but only works momentarily. The sunfish are hungry from their own mating rituals, and they can't resist the opportunity that sits in front of them. This battle rages from morning to night, the school of young getting smaller by the hour. The next morning, there are no sign of the catfish, young or adults. Perhaps under the cover of darkness, the survivors escaped into deeper, more secluded waters. While one species has had a hard time, another has flourished. The morning light illuminates a cloud of sunfish fry that have recently hatched. Every flashing glint of light is a sunfish new to the world. While the vast majority will not survive to adulthood, just enough will mature, produce their own offspring, and maintain the population. The smallmouth bass are busy as well. This male protects eggs late in the nest he has created. Soon they will hatch, releasing a new generation of predators, continuing the cycle. These young will bear witness to our ever-changing world, just as their parents did and just as all the life around them does. Even the humans who call this island their home bear witness to and affect change. The island itself was built atop rocks that rise from the reef. The initial construction of this human habitat reduced the size and splendor of the reef.
but not all change is destructive. The humans are working hard to decrease their disruptive impact and foster a closer, constructive, and more intimate relationship with the wildlife that surrounds. For cohabitating in the space is what makes it so magical. To wake up to thousands of dragonflies emerging from their nymph stage, eating lunch while mink guide their young across the lake, taking an afternoon swim among the fish, and falling asleep to the calls of loons. No single animal owns the reef or its island. It's simply the lake.